All right, Bay Mang, today is Monday, November 23rd. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. Special guest here today, Snake Draft, very big Snake Draft. We got our guy KFC on Zoom. KFC, how we doing? I'm good, man. This is. I was very uh, honored that you said that you know this draft wouldn't be uh, right without me, so I appreciate that, man. It's huge. I mean, listen, the Thanksgiving, if you've been reading Barstool for a long time, I when did you originally write the blog? Uh, so the the blog is the top five power rankings of, of Thanksgiving dishes. I mean, that was probably like 2010. Like that was early. That was probably the first, maybe the first Thanksgiving, maybe the second. So that one's been floating around for like 10 years. And uh, you know, you know what's funny is people every year, like right around now, like in November, they're like, post the blog. You got to post it. I'm like, it's already posted. <laughs> you could just go read it. But oh, they want it. They want yeah, it don't make me Google. Don't make me Google. Yeah, Just put right, it right on the right. super page. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think that's one. Um, I don't think I had to touch that up. The Christmas Eve blog is another one that I always repost, and that's had to change over the years because of a few choice words and jokes and things that you just can't do anymore. But that was, but the Thanksgiving one stays pretty true. But it's funny because I'm not – I'm like the most – my family's like the most like average like white family in America. Like we don't have any special dishes. We don't do anything. So my – my dishes are like very plain and simple, but people people seem to like the blog, so fuck it, let's do it. I'll post it along with this, you know. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> what did you think you have to touch up? I, I'm genuinely curious. <laughs> on on the Christmas Eve blog. Um, oh wait, Chris. Okay, I know exactly what blog yeah. I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that had uh, that had a reference from Always Sunny in it that definitely is no longer allowed. Okay, so you get canceled. Big time. Yeah, nobody. You don't want to get canceled. I don't even like talking about it now because there's probably like some cash aid, cash version of it that you can still read it or something. So, yeah, that one had to be touched up. But the Thanksgiving one has been the same for like upwards, maybe over a decade at this point, and everybody some, seems to still like it. How about yeah, it's WSD? just so simple, but it's like it's it's so classic. Right. WSD it, just asked you to cancel yourself. Tell us all the things on this <laughs> podcast oh, that you no, have to so, delete. <laughs> it's all hypothetical. So yeah. this dude. Uh, this dude tweeted us the other day and said he just discovered KFC Radio and he went and downloaded like the KFC Radio app from like the old original Prem team members and he is listening from episode 1 through and he started like live tweeting it or like recapping each episode and I almost tweeted him I almost quote tweeted it and said yo if anybody wants to get down with with like Steve whatever his name was he's going to watch like episode 1 through present day you guys can all do it together it could be like a rewatch thing and I was like, you know what? I don't know what we said in those episodes. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. leave it alone. And like episode two, he DM me and was like, boy, you guys used to let it fly. Huh? And I was like, okay, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Nobody go back and listen to old episodes. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. They don't exist. <laughs> but yeah, is it, times is have changed. Is it true that the, uh, the dev nest <clears throat> was an inside job just to keep- Bro, uh, that is, if it, if it was not an inside job, it should have been. Like, that was the smartest. That's the best thing that ever happened to us. I get, I get mad never- sometimes because I- for me personally that's probably like my best work ever in in my opinion those years was like when i was like cooking uh so i sometimes i get pissed because i'm like oh man that could have been like a treasure trove that one day i could like turn into a book or whatever and now i'm like thank god all that shit's gone thank god a lot of class of kfc blogs on there for sure yeah for sure you know um so yeah so we're gonna do thanksgiving you heard obviously uh the way we're gonna do this we're gonna do two sides one dessert one guest it could be one notable guest so it's got to be like you know someone dead or alive even but some type of famous guest that everyone could relate to and then one worst person you would not want to sit next to okay so that person it could it's it's more of a generalization it's not like ants too so uh that's the five subcategories uh before we really get into it though we want to talk about roman most guys have tried different ways last long in bed but thinking about baseball doesn't always work. The folks at Roman, an online men's health company, are changing the game with Roman Swipes, a secret to lasting longer during sex. Uh, White Sox, Dave, did you get down on some Roman this weekend? Yeah, I got down on some Roman this weekend. Um, I all, It was simple. Like I was at Declan's over the weekend, and uh, I met a girl, and I had the swipe in my pocket. It was nice and easily concealed. Uh, no one even noticed it was there. I just took it. Uh, Your dick or the swipe? It, uh, well, both, obviously, but I'm speaking about the swipe right now. Um, the swipe, uh, just took it off, wiped it on, let it dry. D- didn't transfer to my partner, and it was easy as that. Yeah, the swipes yeah. are great. Like Dave said, uh, clinically proven way to last longer in bed. 
Effective, easy to use, fast acting. It doesn't require a prescription. Uh, it's discreet. It's unmarked packaging, so you don't got to worry about it showing up. And someone being like, "What the fuck is this?" Uh, the super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, and let it dry. You're good to go. That's it. To get your hands on these, go to getroman.com/dogwalk, and you can get your first month of swipes for just five dollars when you choose a monthly plan. That's getroman.com/dogwalk. Go enhance your sex life. Why not? You really have nothing to lose. Like seriously. Um, all right, so the Thanksgiving draft, we are officially underway. The draft order is Carl, KFC, Chief, myself, and White Sox, Dave. Uh, Carl, the floor is yours, man, number one overall pick. We have general reactions to, like, where you guys stand in the first round before we get going. I know where you stand. Well, I, I, we are starting to get information where there are people that follow this draft. Shout out Richie. They're putting together like data and information on like starting places and, you know, what the winning record is at each position. I'm surprised you took first overall. Now, why were you surprised? Because you typically don't like first. I don't. And I'm glad you brought that up because we're going to get to the pick and the picks obvious. I think for anybody who knows my draft strategies, but at a higher level, I want this is one of the hardest I've had to think before a draft because when we say sides like we, there's no main course discourse here it's turkey that's it I mean sure maybe a turduck in chief but like the sides are limited and there's some heavy hitters and that's why first overall pick I'll get to it I'm taking stuffing and that's very easy pick here it comes out once a year. There's a great argument to be made. It should show up more often. Maybe Christmas Eve, if, if that's your fancy. You guys do a turkey around then. Stuffing one overall. But I do want to be clear to the audience, out of respect to the picks that follow, like I know I speak for everyone here, this is the hardest we've had to think when you're doing the sides. And I'm very lucky to pick one overall, and I'm lucky to get this pick. I'm very fucking lucky to have stuffing on my plate. Where did it rank on the list, KFC? I'm forgetting. <clears throat> Let me pull it up here. I think it was. I know it wasn't one, but general no, feelings. It's, it's about actually. You know what's funny? When I go back and I read this, like sometimes I disagree with myself. Like I, I, I feel like I change. In my mind, there's three things, and like depending on my 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 mood in the moment, those can those change. Uh, I had it listed as three, and in the moment when I was reading it, let me see what I'm reading here. Um, I just said that it automatically gets crowned the champ. Just basically the way that 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 uh, Carl just did it there. It's just kind of an auto pick, you know. And I think that's where on my list I was trying to get a little more cute and creative with it. But it's kind of just like the dish. There's a reason why. It's like when uh, you know when they say like oh that the, the league just had to give Carl Malone the MVP because they were sick of giving it to Jordan. That's stuffing where it's just like in and out every single year. It's now the the bigger question though. I feel like do you guys like the like the homemade, are you down with the stovetop straight from the box, the breadcrumbs? Che or uh, White Sox Dave looks like he has an opinion. Dude, I stuffing. I, I would have taken stuffing one 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 hundred percent. Thank you. Best part of Thanksgiving to me. But like you just said, I am perfectly content with the cheap ass two dollar box stuffing. I think it's fucking delicious. I, don't I think, think when you get weird and they people put like apples and sauce. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't. I don't need all that. You know. But like, well, not me, but my family puts just like a roll of the Jimmy Dean's breakfast sausage in it. Sure, Man. that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. I'm putting together a list of conspiracies here that I'd like Chief to investigate. But Chief, one at, at the top is like there has to be some kind of big food lobbyist effort that like brings stovetop stuffing to or like whatever like the stuffing to our you know our plates like this time of year it has to be like seasonal runoff scrap from the agricultural community there has to be something go someone's making a killing off the fact that it only shows up once a year well you know what's like it's interesting that you say do it more than once a year and i understand why but also doesn't like part of the reason why stuffing is so elite is because of the rarity, the scarcity of it all. Mm -hmm. Like it's one of those things where if you did it every every Sunday dinner, maybe eventually we'd be like, yeah, man, this is just like fucking lumps of breadcrumbs and shit. Like we don't really need yeah, it. Yeah, so it can't be overrated based on frequency, basically. Right, but it's almost like we're we are the only thing in like in in society that we have self control with, and we're like, nope, we're just gonna do it. We all love it, but yep. we're going to well, just it, agree to only do it once deep, once Kevin. a year. It is that right. Is fucking I mean, deep, man. It, it reminds me, one year uh, we were doing Hoboken St. Patrick's Day in my apartment. If, if you don't know, Hoboken used to because they can't do it anymore. Like the craziest party of the year. 
And every year, without fail, in the beginning of the day, we'd be like, we're just going to do it next weekend, too, man. We're just going to keep doing this. Why do we only have to do it once a year? And if, and if you try to recreate it, like, the next, it just doesn't work. You know, it's just got to be, like, the timing has to be right. The stars have to align. And I feel like if you overdid stuffing, it would it would lose its luster. Is That's there anything like, else right now that is only eaten once a year? I mean, there's another thing on this list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Can, yeah. can we get to my... My pick, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, we'll... obviously, I think if you don't know where KFC is going here, like, I feel like this is a good testament to knowing KFC. I know. Yeah, I mean, going. it's 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 the cranberry sauce. <laughs> it's the yes. it's the white trash cranberry sauce jelly from the can with the rings around it, and <laughs> and it falls out, and it kind of jiggles around, and then you cut slices off of that shit. I mean, that to me, that's not my favorite. If I was going with dishes that I that are like delicious dishes that I really really want to eat I would not have that would not be my pick but we're talking about Thanksgiving and what makes Thanksgiving complete what makes that plate of food special to that holiday and it's stuffing is 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 similar and also just tastes better so that's why it's the number one pick but the number two pick to me has got to be the cranberry and there's never been a bigger like my my first pick for my draft is the cranberry from the can, my last pick would be the real shit. Like, fuck out of here with the homemade well, fancy shit. Nope, 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 nope. Got to be the ocean spray from the can white trash. By virtue of this pick, though, Ed, can we agree the real stuff's off the board, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cranberry yeah. sauce Cranberry's is gone. gone. But you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the fancy stuff, to me, I don't even want to look at it. I want to. So this is a know, graphic it, distinction. This is where we just want to be clear on this. It's cranberry sauce. But Ed, I, are you going to do pictures here? How do you how do you plan on presenting this to the audience? It's very important. We know I, I could do whatever we want. We could use some pictures. But the only problem with the pictures, if so, if we use a shitty picture of something like you everything is this yeah. is this no, just, is where just, Commissioner Ed comes in and sabotages. Somebody and I'm jumping ahead of it. I'm jumping yeah. ahead of it. Shout it out to Chief. This is the it. latest Chief has ever gone with a Commissioner Ed accusation in the last couple. <laughs> months <laughs> just throw a little asterisk on it and just say you know gotta be from the can you know what else is really great about it is uh leftovers when you're doing like a little turkey sandwich and you just i just use the slices as like a like a topping you know like a slice yeah. of cheese i just lob a little circular slice of cranberry on there as well oh mama it's so an interesting good. pick because obviously i don't think anybody would say it's the second best thing but it definitely is the second most thanksgiving thing Hundred yeah. percent. That and that to me, that's more important. I, you know, you can have a good dinner, three hundred and sixty-four days a year. You can make what you want. It's got to taste good and all that. But to make it seasonal and to make it, you know, memorable for that holiday, it's got to be stuffing, and then it's got to be cranberry. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say it speaks. It speaks volumes of stuffing. That listen, even though you only have it one day a year. It doesn't mean you're going to be excited for it. People are excited for it. You know, like yeah. you think about the day before Black Wednesday, you see fucking someone from high school for, you know, when you're still going out in those in the heyday, you see them once a year, too. And you fucking you don't look forward to that at all. No. You yeah. You got to do that. So. Right. 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 That's a pro for stuffing. I don't know. Cranberry. I feel like Dave hates cranberry sauce. That's no, not, I mean, I'm exactly like Kevin, like. It's not good, but it's like such an obligation to eat necessary. it. Necessary. Yeah. It's necessary. And yep. I like this is what I do with my plate. I put everything and I just load gravy over the whole plate, including the cranberry sauce, and just make like basically a soup out of everything. Mm -hmm. Just eat it all together. Like I don't eat the turkey and then go to the green bean casserole and then blah blah blah. Like it's all in one one bite on the fork combined together. And green and gross ass ocean spray white trash cranberry <laughs> sauce is part of it. If you have like a homemade uh, cranberry sauce dish, I fucking hate your guts. Yeah. Like, I hate you so much. It's such a hoity-toity, presumptuous, cocky-ass food. It's like, fuck you. Go with the white trash, $2 in a can sauce, and leave it at that. You know what? Speaking of funny, you mentioned the $2. Do you know what the saddest thing in the world is? When you go to the grocery store and you see the, cran the can, the cranberry, on Friday. It's like they can't no. give that shit away. I honestly think I've seen it on sale for like a dime, like 10 cents. It's like we went back to the Great Depression. If you're poor and you're homeless and shit, you should load up on cranberry on, you know, November 25th or whatever the day after is and just load up for the year because that shit is never going to be cheaper. And, Do they and sell you know out? Is it something that sells out? 
Oh, I, I, I would imagine they try to like make sure they have just enough because nobody's buying it the rest of the year. So if they're left over with anything else, that'd just be like a funny dilemma on, on Thanksgiving on that Thursday morning where like the shift just manager is like calling fuck? HQ's like we're out of ocean spray. <laughs> the people are rioting here. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a throw in too. like if you're going like you're doing it for the first time. It's like, yeah, just, just throw a can in the cart. Like yeah. you, it needs to be there. It, right, it, right. It's just getting you got to have it. Yeah. So, all right. Cranberry sauce number two. Uh, Chief, you got the third pick. Yeah, I knew those would be the, the first two picks. I got to say, I've never had that cranberry sauce. You're so you never... bougie fuck. No, that doesn't I, surprise me. You're it's a been, fucking cake eater. <laughs> it's been it's been served. I remember being like seven years old and seeing it. And I'd be like, what's that? And they're like, it's cranberry sauce. I'm like, that's not fucking sauce. Like, you're lying to me. And I just like checked out forever. So I've never had like the homemade bougie kind. I've never had the gelatin can't think kfc you're saying like oh the next day it's 10 cents let me tell you there's no way that shit's going bad by next year change the fucking label yeah you're right you're right you're right so you're right. <laughs> um so i knew those would be the first two off the board this one is like a year-round thing for me um but it is the number one side mashed potatoes have to, you can't go wrong with mashed potatoes it's the first thing that's gone if you get mashed potatoes left over the next day like count your lucky stars because yeah. usually it does not make like past the buffet line for one round so mashed potatoes feel great about it. a little butter i like to leave the skins on give it a little texture uh but any way you do it you can't fuck up mashed potatoes number yeah that would have been my my pick for like just tastiness and like what yeah. makes my dish that it would have been mashed potatoes yeah yep. is yeah, anybody it's... else getting a little sleepy just thinking about that heavy mm -hmm. ass and what's going to be in your mm -hmm. stomach on thursday mm -hmm. can't well, wait. and what time do you guys eat it because this is also an important question isn't it such a weird holiday where it's like, yeah, today, for whatever reason, we're just going to do dinner at like 1245. What the fuck is that about? Why don't we just have it at a normal ass time? I feel like it's normally around like the second quarter of the Cowboy game. Like whatever yeah. time that is. Why that's is when that I, though? I have no idea. Maybe I, just because people want to get the fuck out of there. I guess, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 as I get, I, I don't know where all you guys are at in life at this point. I know a few of you married and shit, but like once you have to go to multiple houses, I guess that's why it's like, you start at two so that we can do someone else's dessert at like six and you got to be able to bounce around. But it's very strange that we just decide to all do it like in the middle of the fucking afternoon. Yeah, it's it's I it's like a 3 p.m. Like, that's what I think is like or like a 2 30, 2 o'clock. But mash is good. I mean, mash is the play here for sure. Yeah. Uh, this is like the least surprising one, two, three, I think so far. Uh, so I'm I'm. I'm ch chief. I'm like proud of you at the same time that you didn't botch it. You know, that, that's something so fancy patronizing. Right? Like what the fuck? I've had great picks week in week out. You guys are just always like, like chalk and you've had things like cranberry sauce and pop tarts that I've never had. So you have like this distinct advantage, but I love mashed potatoes. I'm thrilled. I got my number one side in the, in the third overall pick. All right. So it's to me, this is, uh, don't fuck it up, Ed. I know. I am actually worried that I'm going to fuck it up. I got to go with, actually, I'm going to go with dessert right here. Um, right now, wow. I think it's the best spot is to go pumpkin pie. Mm. It's the number one dessert. It's the same thing. So I'm going to go with pumpkin pie. So uh, you're leaving all the other sides out there, man? That's kind of a crazy, that's a bold move. Brilliant move is what it is, Ed. It's an absolutely brilliant move. I don't move. know, I'm, man. I'm sitting here reading the, reading the tea leaves. I didn't think you would go that route, but as soon as, as, soon as you said dessert, Ed, um, uh, pumpkin pie is number one too. I, I mean, feel like you say, yeah. I think that Thanksgiving dessert, like traditional desserts, are actually inferior in general. I think it's crazy to use your one pick on a, on a, in a dessert. I mean, I like pumpkin pie, but there are better sides out there for your dinner than there are pumpkin pie as a dessert. In my mind, there's also probably better desserts. No, so, whoa, no, no. Whoa, I don't know whoa. that pumpkin pie is one one. You no, see, to no, me in no. general, I think that pie, like we would all agree that pie is the Thanksgiving dessert, yeah. and to me, pie is like pretty low on the list of desserts in my mind. I'm not a pie guy. Big pie guy, and I, I, I pumpkin pie. You get the fucking whipped cream. Yeah, that's mm, the great. best part. All right, well, how about this? And I think there's a general theme here. If you keep up with me, that I pretty much like the white trash version of almost everything, but I prefer like the fake. White trash pumpkin pie, yeah. The over like the 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 home cooked shit, right? Give me like the Entenmann's or like just the the sugary. Oh, it's basically just like orange sugar. It's really not pumpkin at all. I'd prefer yeah. that than the real shit. 
you know, I'm, I'm happy with pumpkin pie. I could have gone. Uh, it was cider pumpkin pie there, but the way things go, I think overall pumpkin pies are number four. Uh, I'm happy with where I got it. And I'm also banking on Dave, you know, dropping the ball a little bit too. So that's known to happen. Mug root beer, throw a fucking wrench in the Here's whole soda draft. Mm. Um, and I want to do a blind root beer taste test with all of you. Just prove that you don't know what your fuck you're talking about. Um, I already told you we're doing that. <clears throat> Okay, well, whenever, whenever, when we do it, I'll be proven. I'll be vindicated. But um, I'm going to go to the d- dessert route too. I thought I was hoping this slipped to me because in this specific draft, it's very, it's a tough one. I think to be in the fifth spot, you wanted those one of those first three picks. I unfortunately didn't didn't get it. I got the snake. I got the wraparound. I'm going to go apple pie. I think apple pie is infinitely better than pumpkin pie, but I do like pumpkin pie. That's how much I like apple pie. Apple pie is so fucking good. You put that scoop of ice cream on top of it. It melts into like the into the gooey middle part. It's got the nice crust. It's so much better than pumpkin pie. And I like pumpkin pie. I would agree. That's my top pie. Give me apple with a little, what is that? The a la mode. Is that what it's called? The ice yeah, cream. Yeah, right. Put that on there. Woo. I, I feel like you can also like overload your apple on your apple pie too, though. I don't need to be that much. I like the, a lot of, uh, it's the one pie where I like a lot of the crust. I like a lot of the crumble. Give mm-hmm. me the apple in it, and I need the, the taste of it, but I actually like the the, the bottom and the edges. Uh, that's do you the only like, pie. Uh, do you like the fence top? Uh, I don't know what it's called. Oh, yeah, where it's like crisscross. Yeah, the yeah, fence yeah. top. I like that. <laughs> if that's not what it's called, it should be called fence top pies. <laughs> chain, link, chain link crust. Yeah. yeah, I like that. The, th- the more of that shit, the better. So give me the fence top. Yeah. The fence top. I like that, Ed. I don't, I, don't, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's a fence top. It's always like fancy. People who do that and like they show it to you before it goes in the oven, it's like, wow, like you really took your time. You're an artist. <laughs> You're an artist. How did you exactly? Do that? No, listen, I think pumpkin pie is awesome. I think it's a great pick. I just, I just, pumpkin pie. I, I mean, I think apple pie is awesome. Sorry, but pumpkin pie is what I associate with, but it's, it's a great pick. I think it's, I think it's. Easily number two, and obviously it's called a it. a uh, lattice top. Lattice, yes. Fuck that. It's a fence top. It's a fence, yeah, top. fence top for the again for the white trash people out there. Fence <laughs> top. It's a fence top. Uh, but no, it's a good pick, Dave. Apple pie. Just quick shout out to McDonald's. They do a great apple pie. They've been doing it for as long as I've been alive. Is yeah, consistent. Two for one. The two for two for a dollar, right? I yeah. mean that. Is the perfect Burn. example of like you don't need to do it. Get one that's like fresh out of the microwave because you know that they don't like, and you just scald your entire mouth on it, but you keep going. That's one of the hottest contents of all time. Hotter than the than the the hot pocket. Hotter than the McDonald's coffee. The inside of the McDonald's apple pie will ruin your life. Ooh. I would argue that like the Federal Reserve needs to implement a McDonald's apple pie pricing index to like, ju- if I want to know how much the economy's up, show me in relation to the stability of the, of the cost of an apple pie. Like how many apple pies can I get with this in 2019 versus like 1996? That shit fucking makes sense. To me. And it, and it's always quite a lot. I mean, that, that like you can get a shit ton of apple pie for very little money. That it's the, that's a fucking amazing. The whole and you know what? How can like some bites be cold and some bites be fucking three thousand degrees? How can I get two of these for a dollar? How can they do apples so well at a burger joint? It's a mystery that I love. Apple pie from McDonald's hits near and dear to my heart. Genius. Apple pie and, and hash browns, two mm-hmm. two best fast food items in the, on the planet. Um, for my next pick, this one's <clears throat> I know I'm gonna get ripped on for, but I don't care. I'm going with the side. Um. I think it's the best side because of its combo with gravy and everything that I talk about has to have gravy dumped on it. Obviously mashed potatoes and gravy go together, but I'm going uh sweet uh, potato casserole with the marshmallows burnt on top. I think it's so much better than green bean casserole, mostly because I don't like green beans really at all. I'll eat it when in Rome on Thanksgiving, but green bean casserole is like down my list of um, what I like on, on Thanksgiving. I love sweet potato casserole. It is fucking so good. So I mean that you've just confirmed you're just a big marshmallow guy, like you, I, had, you had the Hawaiian salad, which was sneaky, the worst pick anyone's had besides when you took Jesus Christ. If I would said ambrosia salad, everybody would have fucking loved it. But I went with the white trash version. What, say that again. I said if I would have called it ambrosia salad and gave it that like nice fancy name, no one would have said a peep about it. But I went with the white trash Hawaiian salad like, version. Well, I mean, I don't know what I don't really about. even like marshmallows that much. Like I don't eat Lucky Charms because I don't like the marshmallows. I don't, I don't know. It's just what, whatever it is, the combo of marshmallows and the sweet potatoes, 
is fucking delicious. Then you you mix it all like in a in a smorgasbord hodgepodge with the stuffing and and whatever other sides and the turkey and the cranberry sauce and it's just delicious. It's the best. I'm going with sweet potato casserole. You talk like you put your your plate in the blender and then just drink it. Like that's what it sounds like. I basically do. What a fucking Fred Flintstone motherfucker. What are you, what are we doing here, Dave? <laughs> What do you mean? What are we doing here? I had to get a side. I went with what I think is the best Sweet side. Potato, I, I don't. I don't have. I don't really have a uh, a take on it. I don't know if. Uh, if it's Carl... so you don't eat sweet potatoes hmm. with the marshmallows on top more than once a year. I'd say after, um, like turkey itself, and after stuffing, sweet potatoes is like the number three thing that's like near and dear to Thanksgiving. I love sweet potatoes. It's on my list. I just hate the, that you added the mushrooms to it with the casserole. That makes it gross. Two totally different things, you fucking idiot. What'd you say? You what is that? What's all in it, Dave? Sorry. Well, can you, can you explain? I'm pretty sure you just load it up with uh, sour cream uh, once they're mashed and What's before that? you put them in the oven, and then you got the layer of marshmallows on top. Your, Not your mushrooms like Chief just said. What did I? I said mushrooms. Oh, your, your yeah, right? I meant marshmallows. So that makes oh, it gross. You like it? You dislike it? I'm surprised Dave uh, went there. I'm just trying to think of how this impacts future sweet potato match discussions related to this conversation, which I anticipate to go. Mostly the first three rounds are going to be food heavy. So, um, because there's a place to talk about the sweet potato, and I I do think I'm hesitant that. We're just going to be left with casserole talk now. You know, if there's an opportunity to round table sweet potatoes generally, but now I don't know if sweet potato mash is on the table as a side for other people. So, like, is this now the time to pull the trigger on that part of the conversation, Ed? You know, I like to be respectful of future picks. Um, so I'll, I'll stick. My analysis can relate primarily to the casserole, and in this case, Dave, I think a casserole favors Thanksgiving. I think you say casserole, boom, it's Thanksgiving. And then the other nice thing about it is you have that sweet potato combo with it. So just, I think overall it's powerful. All right, sweet potato casserole, KFC, how do you feel about it? I am not, my family is really not sweet potato type people. Uh, So I don't really have it much. By the way, is yams and sweet potatoes the same thing? Yeah. They are? I think they're different. No, sweet potato is it's the exact same thing. I think so. Yeah, yeah. But I, but that's my point. Is like I'm so, I don't know shit about it. All I know is that any, I think any food you can melt mash uh, melt marshmallows on top of it, and that's like your dinner deal, your dinner side. I guess I can get down with that. It feels almost more dessertish to me, but I'm not gonna throw. I'm not gonna slander it. All right, sweet potato casserole, Dave. Uh, you got that in pump apple pie. Sorry on your uh, wraparound. All right, it's back to me. I'm I'm happy I went clear, pumpkin pie. To be clear, sweet potatoes and yams are different things. They are different. or whatever you can call a sweet potato a yam, but that's not correct. Interesting. What? It's just a different uh, type of potato or a different way. Of it's a whole potato. different thing. Whole they're different just thing. like yeah, they're just different. Interesting. Okay. Like they're yeah, similar in respects, but they're different. Got yams it. are a root vegetable. And sweet potatoes are like a potato. potato. Like, yeah. yeah. Yams you know have a funny? yams Actually, have a white flesh. As as I'm thinking about it, like I do crush sweet potato fries. So they're great. You know, I'm, I, I, now that I'm thinking through it, I guess I actually like it. But I would never eat. I don't know. If you gave me a plate of sweet potato fries at Thanksgiving, I would fucking hammer them. But like like scoops of like just sweet potatoes, I don't know. It just feels different to me, even though it's not. It's a white trash meal. It's super easy, okay. super cheap, and it would fit right in in a Clancy household if you guys Let's go. Let's here's go. what a sweet here's what a sweet potato casserole is to me. If you were drafting wide receivers, sweet potato to me is a wide receiver who can fucking like a short wide receiver that can run. All right, can't really get open in space, like a one dimensional casserole. Similar, one dimensional. What Dave's trying to do with the sweet potato casserole here, maybe the guy can't run his face. Like, you're trying to combo these two things that are mm-hmm. hard, but, like, if you hit it on the head correctly, Dave, it's a fucking home run. I know that's a fucked up analogy, but, like, we're drafting here, guys. We're looking at the board. We're looking at prospects. Um, right, Does that make yes. any sense? 
<laughs> a little bit. I, I kind of see what you're saying. Jesus you're taking Christ. you're taking two good things. You're, you're taking <laughs> two average things and hope making them one. Yes, year. exactly. Right, taking yes. two average things that are probably third or fourth round picks I'd and hoping there. that they hit a home run in the second round. Ed, thank I'd, you. you know I'd agree there. It's. I mean, I don't really love sweet potatoes in and of themselves, but when you, it's something magical happens when you combine them with those shitty cheap marshmallows. Greater than the sum of their parts, or yeah. whatever that expression yeah. is. See, that's a good. The way we did this together was greater than the sum of its parts. Teamwork, <laughs> teamwork to make the dream work. That, that's our whole office. Greater don't leave than the me hanging out. Don't leave me hanging on a fucking island when I'm making an analogy. Thank you, boys. <laughs> um, all right, so it's back to me. I'm very happy. I went pumpkin pie. Because I was uh, I was between that and a side, and I thought Dave was going to take it. If you look at a standard Thanksgiving plate, obviously you got your turkey, you got your mash, you got your cranberry sauce, you got your stuffing, and there's always a nice roll sitting right there as well. So I got to take rolls. I mean, rolls is an extra add-on to the plate. It's a no-brainer. I'm shocked Dave didn't take it, but I'm very happy he passed on it. So rolls is my pick. Now is does that mean? Uh, okay. All right, no, I'm, I'm not even gonna say it. That, uh, well, no, I guess I gotta ask the question. Does that don't mean ask like, it? Don't ask it. Don't ask it. All right, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. If it has okay. to do with future picks, don't ask it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'll leave it alone. So rolls, I think it's a good pick. I think if you don't have a roll, you're a sucker. I think rolls that come fresh out of the oven. If it's bakery, I like a bakery roll that you go out and you get fresh in the morning. Something you wouldn't do for a regular. I think that's better than homemade rolls. When I say homemade rolls, though, like the ones that you get from the store and you break off, like the Pillsbury ones, those ones are okay. If, okay? If ones, okay? Listen, relative to the roll community, if you were to go to Dinkles on Lincoln Avenue or you were to go to Tuzix, Rest in Peace, or Wolf's Bakery in Evergreen Park, listen, I'm, pr I'm, I'm preferential to the local bakery, Kevin. I, I say this with all due respect. Fuck Dinkles. Give me that Pillsbury dough, boy. Give me that. You got to pop the can and it explodes yeah. and you roll it out and then they get all golden and fluffy. Woo! -hoo! Pillsbury. I don't know this Dinkles you speak of, but I want to go stand, more than okay, I go stand in line outside at 7 a.m. with a bunch of fucking 60 year old guys that got sent on the get sent on that no. errand run from the old lady. The yeah. neighborhood Give place me that where white you're trash. Elbowing. Give me that WT. Keep it going with the fake stuff at the Clancy Thanksgiving. Give me that Pillsbury. Eddie, you get also, them all, though. The nice thing the way, is you get them all, Eddie. It, when you it, say it, rolls, you get the Dinkles and you get the Pillsbury. Get them all, baby. Do you guys oh, do... Kevin, uh, we get the... Yeah. Uh, do you guys do, like, appetizers, if you will? Like, uh, yeah. like, like we almost every family get-together, we do pigs in a blanket. And even though that's not necessarily, like, a Thanksgiving vibe... We always have those out first to the point that half the time I'm like full before we even sit down. But the pigs in a blanket with the Pillsbury as the uh, as the roll there, you wrap them up in that. <laughs> oh, baby. The little shitty fucking meatballs that you buy like pre-made yeah. and throw in the garbage. Crop. Garbage. I love it. The worst, but they're delicious. Yep. Uh -huh. Just uh -huh. the fucking, uh, toothpick in them and just and eat them right out of the crock. <laughs> yep. Shout out, Clem. But yeah, rolls. Rolls is rolls the pick. Dave, do, are you are you mad you passed on rolls? No, but like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have picked rolls at all. Because really? yes. And I don't want to say why, because I have something else up my sleeve. Okay. Well you're not a carbo guy. You got it's it's not marathon season quite yet. It has nothing to do with the carbs. The fucking calories and carbs don't count on Thanksgiving. You eat everything you can. You eat to the point where you're uncomfortable and not embarrassed with how much you ate, but like you feel like sh what you just did to your body, you're like, dude, I fucking hate this feeling. I'm going to go take a nap. Mm. Well, was, yeah, you, you want to eat kidding. until you're tired. Like that's yeah, the goal. Kidding. Yeah. Um, Chief, it's to you. So I'm trying to decide how fucking Irish I want to be on this <laughs> podcast. Like, do I, do I go potato, potato back to back? Hell yeah. Um, no. All right. I'm, I'm going to go with biscuits. Cause I think when you took rolls, I want to go biscuits. Biscuits are flakier. They're nicer. You melt a little of that. You pop off the top a little bit, melt that butter on there. Biscuits over rolls every single time, I I and including the next day. Like if you're going to make a little sandwich the next day, the next morning, you want those leftover biscuits, you slice them open again. Give me a biscuit over a roll any day. So I'll take biscuits with uh, my second pick. And better with the gravy too. If you're sopping up gravy, 
you want that biscuit. Ed completely fucked up his drafts going rolls over biscuits. He did. He's oh, a fucking idiot. What are we idiot. from, fucking South Carolina? What, what do you mean? <laughs> fucking give me rolls over biscuits. What do you think I care? Dude, the biscuits every single day of the week and twice on Sunday over rolls on Thanksgiving. No. And it, no. I like you get the shitty fucking Pillsbury Doughboy thing when you you twist the can and pop mm-hmm. pops it open. Yeah. Yep. It's I Ed, come on. No, no. Be biscuits are better than rolls. They're just better than rolls. No, I, this is this they're a, fluffier. This is they're South flakier. Carolina Chief. This is going away party. South Carolina <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Fucking. I do have I do have in laws from the South. I got my brother in laws from the South. My other brother in laws from Texas. So biscuits have become part of our um, part of our Thanksgiving in in like the last six seven years. But they're like. They're money and they're better than rolls. They just are. Like, there's no argument as far as I'm concerned. Even Dave knows it. Like, we know, like, biscuits, once you go to biscuit, you don't go back to roll. I, I couldn't agree more. Could Dave not- is your backup and you're happy with that? I mean, I, look at it. I, it's strange bedfellows. I'm not thrilled about it, but he is right. <laughs> or, where do you guys stand in biscuits versus rolls? I'm wait, who, rolls. Who, who, who's, so wait who, whose pick is it right now? Chief, I just, he picked just took biscuit. biscuits. No, but who's that, who's up next? You are You're up next. Okay, well then I'm gonna throw a whole other wrench into the conversation because I'm going cornbread. Fuck uh-huh. all of them. <laughs> I'm doing cornbread on top of it. I would go. I would go. Uh, in general, I agree with the biscuits idea being su- like superior, but I think that the crescent roll again, the Pillsbury when done right, perfectly fluffy, also almost more flaky if you do them right, then the biscuit. So on Thanksgiving, I would go, it goes biscuit, Pillsbury, but then cornbread to me is on a whole other level. Because of the sweetness, it's almost like a little bit of a dessert. In a way, it can almost kind of be its own, it's like the roll and the biscuit is almost like a so, like a extra. This is like its own side in my mind. Cornbread, when done right, is is Cornbread's special fucking fire. I, lo- like, look it, so I, lo- I love cornbread. Like yeah, that's a awesome. great pick. It's on. It was on my board, but I just I had to just go. I had to go biscuits there, but I don't. I don't hate the cornbread. You know why I think biscuits is an okay pick? Like you mentioned it, gravy, biscuits, and gravy kind of go hand in hand. And by the way, do you like? I guess we're just assuming gravy is. No, we're That's fucking not. not, because with the tenth pick of the draft, I am taking gravy. What a but, transition, Evan. But Thank I you mean, I. So are, are we now saying that the rest of us don't get gravy because we didn't draft it here? Because in my mind, it's I like don't we know. all were operating well, like it was went out through there. Through this whole thing without taking, I heard mashed yeah. potatoes, no gravy. I heard everybody's putting yeah. gravy on stuff. Gravy has its own dish. Someone's responsible for the gravy. It comes yeah. with its own the recipe. Important. There's all these no, most important. I'm, I'm putting a fucking veto on this. That's not a side. So we're just not taking great gravy's not a side. I feel like it gravy's a condiment. Like, yeah, gravy. But you gravy, know what? You're not right. You're not wrong. But but what Carl said is true, and that's why I, I, I thought it had to be drafted, but then when nobody I should have asked this, I should have clarified, because it is something that you have to like Carl said, it's assigned to someone, or it's like, you know, your grandma's the one who makes the gravy because she knows how to make the gravy. If you fuck up the gravy, it's a problem it's not just like a a condiment like oh you put ketchup oh you put mayo this is something that needs to be cooked and prepared in the right way so absolutely but you don't eat well it. i wasn't prepared for this either i wasn't prepared at all for this i thought it would i thought this would come up organically because someone would say mashed potatoes and gravy and we would just have it right. out in the first round i'm sitting here like there's no way it's gonna go gravy i mean you guys are reading off Rolls, biscuits, cornbread, sweet potato casserole. Like, gravy with all due respect, I'm sitting at home being like, "Wait a second, is Kyler Murray draft eligible?" Yes, he is. <laughs> like, maybe I don't know how this works. So, well, what does the commissioner say? Taking, the I'm commissioner say, is suspiciously gravy. quiet right now. I, I, I want. I, I like. I like a democracy. I like to hear the people talk. I feel. Ooh, That's we have one inside. It's you don't eat gravy on its own. Sure, it comes in its well, own. Bowl. I, I think if Carl if if Carl's taking gravy, we need to see a video of him like spooning it into his yes. mouth on Thanksgiving. Yeah, just like, drink that's it out of the boat. You, you know? Yeah, you got to consume it that way if it's a side. That might Although, be, otherwise, it's a sauce condiment thing. I, I, I mean, but I you say, eat all of it that ends up on your plate. You end up like scooping it in with the bread, and like so. If it's how a is side, it if it's a side, you better eat it like a soup this this Thursday. So yeah, I'm saying, like I'm saying, the arguments are this: one, it needs to be an argument for Carl would be that it needs to be cooked and prepared, and there's recipes and there's certain mm-hmm. ways. It's not just like generic. But the other argument is that you don't eat it alone, so that it, it has to be some sort of condiment sauce, accoutrement, if you will, because you don't just right. sit there and 
and spoon it. Right. Like, you, like no okay. one, no one's drafting the base that you put on your see. turkey. Like we're not drafting like the turkey based because it's the turkey is the thing. Yeah, but it's, it's not Thanksgiving as, without gravy. Like right. it's not. It's not. It's Thanksgiving without turkey base. Let's not relegate gravy to turkey base. But it's its own category. It's not a side. A side is like something that it's it's a complimentary, complimentary. Like, I think the turkey base analogy is actually perfect because you can eat all the other stuff. You're not, and you can, and it's turkey, but it's with the base and all these. Chief, things, that might be one of the most out of touch things I've ever heard. To you, no, for you to say Thanksgiving exists without gravy. That's not what I said. That's where you're I said, going. I said, I said these dishes, like you make them, you don't put the, you don't pre put the gravy on, but the gravy is part of them. And it's the same thing with the turkey. Like you'll, you can make a turkey, but it'll be dry as fuck without that baster. Mm. So you need to baste the turkey the same way you need to put all your fucking gravy on these sides. So you need to put gravy on the sides. Is what you're saying now? That's that's what I just said. That's what I said the whole <sighs> time, Dave. I agree. I mean, tell I'm them to take it. the. What do you say? Take the potatoes think, out of your ears. Yeah, take the. You're, you got Carl's got potatoes growing in his ears right now. He's being obtuse. KFC, being, do you veto? I I mean I, I hate to be like middleman KFC, but I I see both sides of it. I mean I almost did draft it myself, and then I just thought to myself, well I don't want to waste a pick. It sounds like everybody's already assuming the gravy, but it was on my mind. To, to draft the gravy, but the whole you, you don't eat it by itself is a very compelling argument on the other side. So I feel like right now it's, you've, got, you've got two votes. you got Chief and White, White Sox Dave saying no. you got Carl obviously saying yes. I'm kind of like a half, so I feel like you're the tiebreaker here, whether it just goes a full three to one and a half or if it goes to two and a half over two. No, it takes two vetoes to overrule something. Yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, I'm not I sure. I haven't officially vetoed. Well, then, then, I'm just then, presenting yeah, not, arguments. Well, then it's, it comes down to Chief. Do you veto or not? Because, Eddie, do you veto? I I am last. I am a tiebreaker of sorts. No. Have a fucking backbone. I am a One time, Ed. Sorts. Put Wait, yourself why are, out why there. Why don't you ever, like, you even I vetoed before. Justice Roberts issues an opinion. Right? <laughs> he doesn't just sit in the back chamber and say, let me know when it's four to four. He's fucking sitting there round table yeah. with everybody. Oh, this is tough. Chief won't pull the trigger. I'm going to so, This I is so you great for content, by the way. And have an opinion one time. I'm, I, I do have an opinion, but Let's why should it. I, why should I look it. out for Barada gang? Why should I look out for you when you've been a <laughs> dickhead on these? Because they just tell the truth. And I presented the other side of the argument. Now it's time for you to step up. I don't think gravy is a side. Oh, wow. that's a veto. That's a veto. Oh, no, did I say veto or not, Chief? <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to argue is, against it. Uh, I mean, you should be a fucking alderman. Like, that's your that's your future. You don't take a stand on anything. You're just waiting, waiting, waiting around. So let's hear the politician, side. Ed. This is this is why you're the commissioner. Comment from you. You you argued against it heavily, but you're like, oh, but I never vetoed that. All right, fine. Fuck it. Veto. I don't think right. it's a side. Chief and Dave veto. Uh, Carl, and so did Ed. And so did KFC. Have, Let the record have show. To pick another uh, side, Carl. KFC, you vetoed? No. I, I, I Again, I hate to be like this, this middle-of-the-road pussy, but... I've never been more 50-50 on something in my life. I can understand the compelling argument for both sides. You know, I thought, to be honest with you guys, the way fucking Chief drafted mashed potatoes but just left gravy out of the conversation, the way White Sox Dave fucking slid up and was like, oh, if you just slather the sweet potato casserole on gravy. That's what threw me for a loop. gravy with the rolls. I mean, everybody has mentioned gravy in their picks. I honestly thought you guys were setting me up for this. <laughs> and now that it's happened in front of me, I mean. Was it a setup? I think gravy is. Do you want to go ahead assumed. and. It's not. Yeah. You guys give me it one second. It was assumed by the rest of the guys. One second. One second. Is he going to get the gravy boat? He's going to drink it, isn't he? Yeah, that would be. That you, know what, you know what? Another argument is, I mean, you you could, I think, right, theoretically just get like canned gravy like pre-made and just like pour like you wouldn't you don't have to cook it right i'm sure there's some like shitty already made version of the condiment yeah, there it is. yeah there it is. that's a nice gravy boat oh boy be... got its own fucking boat but it's not a side it might it might as Correct. well be <laughs> let the record drink. show i just went into my pantry or my cabinet cookware and pulled out a gravy fucking bowl 
and it's not a side I can't take in this draft. Would you draft butter? You put <laughs> butter on. <laughs> but nobody yeah. makes nobody it's cooks butter. I mean, it you is, and you is. and Turkey Base Boy go off and fucking plan a Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner together. You and your butter. I mean, it's just a disgrace to my aunt Nancy, who specializes in the gravy on my mom's side of the family. Shout out, Nancy, you're the best. Uh, so official veto. Say it, Ed. Make the official, official chief the, chief and White Sox Dave Vito. So we're gonna and so uh, did Ed, but he's too much of a <laughs> pussy to say so. But Ed said Ed says it's not a side, but I'm not vetoing. What a bitch! All right, <laughs> it already had two votes. I didn't need to. So. Carl, can we put you down for green bean casserole here, or what are we doing? <laughs> Go fuck yourself is what you can do. Um, all right, I heard some pies. They all fucking suck. I'm going pecan pie. <laughs> Pecan mm. pie, second round to round it out. I, I want a round table this. If if I wanted a round table it, I'd ask for your opinions about pecan pie. I don't give a fuck at this point. You guys just told me gravy's not a side. I'm going to do the pecan pie on my own here. Pecan pie is delicious. It makes a play around the holidays. It starts in Thanksgiving. You might get a taste in Christmas. Once that's fucking over, pecan pie goes back to the fucking rafters. It's just like stuffing. If we're building a plate that's authentic, unique Thanksgiving food, you're not fuck, no, no offense, Chief. Mashed potatoes is in play tonight, okay? It's in I play it, fucking I made it last tonight, week. buddy. I, I made it last week. All right, somebody so. pulls out a pecan pie on fucking Wednesday before Thanksgiving, you're a psychopath, all right? If you're in February eating pecan pie, send them to the fucking loony bin. Pecan pie in the second round. I will now take dissenting opinions. Is that getting vetoed? No, you can have it, but to say that you only eat pecan pie on Thanksgiving is just an unbelievably outrageous statement. I like know. that's the most outrageous statement in snake draft history. Well, guess what, Dave? I'm passionate right now. <laughs> I'm inflamed. Okay. If I don't make any sense, it's because I'm all fucking pissed off. This is bound to happen during these drafts. God damn. I wanted stuffing and graving on the graphics so bad. Cause if it's Chief, stuffing gravy, took it away from you. there's just like no way I lose. It's the same thing with sampler platter. You go, well, you know, sampler play KFC is sampler platter and appetizer. Yeah, in a draft, so you're in, just in you're just gonna yeah. If you're doing oh, a draft, uh, you can just take everything. Well, I took it. Yeah. I took it in the second round. I tried to take sampler platter in the second no, round. That, these I mean, fucking clowns came in. That, like, that's oh, a can't that's do a that. big it's a big fucking loophole. It's on the menu as an item that you can select, but oh, for, the, this, for, this for this the integrity is, of a draft, you can't just pick something that has all of the fucking options. Talk to Ed. Up. You want to talk to integrity? Talk to Ed. I'm KFC, just playing by the rules. KFC, welcome to the Barada Gang. Like you can, you're you're admitted now with that take because it is about uh, can it I is tell about you, integrity. There are two things that go on with with Barcel Chicago that I that I sit back in the shadows and I watch and I and I have not spoken up because I don't I got enough on my plate pun intended right now. When I see first of all Barada's fire, second of all I cannot believe it, but I agree with White Sox Dave's movie opinions. Almost 100% of the time. It's no. fucking crazy. It's crazy. Every time the guy says something, I'm like, fuck, I agree with Dave on this one. So I I, I, I just can't bring it to myself. I don't want to have – I don't want I don't want another fight. I got – I'm fighting with countries and all sorts of shit. I don't need to be doing Barada arguments, and I don't need to be doing Zen, Denzel Washington arguments, but I'm on both your fucking sides on those I am things. like uh, – what's his name? Ugatu in, in Zoolander. Same, yeah. The same damn look. Like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pulls. That is Denzel Washington. He's You're the not same wrong. in every fucking movie. You're not wrong. But both of those things. I like a good Barada. Denzel, great actor, but often repeats himself. So, I don't, I, I don't even want to be Barada gang, though. I just want to. I want it out there that I agree, but I can't get into another fight. <laughs> All right, that's fine. We'll count you as an ally, but... right. In the shadows. Yes, know exactly. You're, you're sending us funding below the table. Be like, right, hey, I'll do like an we'll airdrop of some yeah. shit, and that's it. Yeah. yeah, all right. If this if this draft right now, if someone's outlining the topics we're on, they have indented and tabbed so fucking far <laughs> over on that Microsoft Word page. We're doing <laughs> Joker, all Denzel over. reviews, at <laughs> sampler platters, vetoes. <laughs> we just finished the second round. I, I know, we got to go. I got shit to do. Let's go. What's up? Fuck. Yeah, yeah. We'll pencil KFC. We'll pencil it next time we do radio at HQ. You're sticking around for another hour. You're coming out. Yeah. Of the, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll hash all that shit out. <laughs> Con pies off the board. Uh, Carl, you have another pick. I'm in good. Okay, go ahead, Vito. This was a source of controversy. I don't want to take this draft. As I go through this, though, I added, I had 11. 
I had to add biscuits and cornbread as you guys drafted them. They were not my top 11. There are two remaining items in my top 11. One is a dessert. I will not say that dessert, although a lot of you people have taken this dessert for granted thus far. I'm going to go mac and cheese. That's the last salad side on the board. Whoa. Mac and che- Whoa. Okay, I let's mean, hear that, some. That, well, that was just a big discussion uh, yep. here in HQ with the fucking the guineas. Uh, Marty and Rico <laughs> and, and those Whoa. guys were all arguing it. Uh, so are we... I mean, you can take whatever you want, obviously. I would say mac and cheese is delicious. I love it. But if I'm making a list of, like, Thanksgiving right. things, I don't, I, don't, I don't ever associate those two things in my mind. Now, this is the one thing for Thanksgiving, and we don't have this for my family, but I wouldn't judge or say anything bad about a family who did have mac and cheese. I won't eat cheap mac and cheese. I think it's disgusting. I think it's inedible. Like the powdered cheese is fucking horrible, bro. If we have been eat, white trash brother brother in arms know, here, and you just fucking I, bailed on us. I know it. I I hate to admit it, but like cheap like craft mac and cheese just can't do it. It's fucking not, it's, well, not at Thanksgiving. If you're right. gonna do mac and cheese, I think that's a little bit not traditional. But fuck it, it's delicious. Who cares? You can have it whenever you want. But if you're gonna do it at the Thanksgiving table, I think it should be the kind where it's like got a, a, a cr- almost like a crust on top. It got the crumbles. You do like a seven cheese or some shit like that. But but just in general, Kraft macaroni and cheese is perfectly fine. Fuck off. I'm sorry. I mean, this is just it's it's. I don't want to say it's out of character because I I mean I do. Oh, it is. It is. But I just like like Easy Mac. Like no, won't eat it. Won't eat it. Won't touch it. Carl's talking about the good stuff. I mean, listen, it's a controversial opinion about whether it belongs, but it belongs enough to say that it's not. I don't think anybody can veto that. No, nobody. Like it's just it's atypical. That doesn't yeah. make it bad. It, it's always it's always a part of our Thanksgiving. So it's a good and, pick. Uh, yeah, like it, and it's like the good. You have like the the crispy breadcrumbs on top. You throw it in the mm-hmm. boiler. You get that cheese crisped up. It's not mm-hmm. like what you're talking about, Dave. Like the, it's got to be. Yeah. It'll be a good mac and cheese. You just pour pour that cheese right in there. Throw it in the oven. It's a great pick. Great side. So some little problem with it. I don't. So good pick. Uh, KFC, you're up. I mean, I gotta go. Uh, my dessert pick here. Um, you know. Like I said, desserts on Thanksgiving to me are not really a big I don't I don't look forward to it as much as other desserts other times of the year. I'm not a huge pie guy, but there's one pie that usually ends up in my at my house. Um I guess it's like um I guess it's like a chocolate pudding pie. Is that a thing? It's like a pie yeah, I guess it's like this chocolate pudding that she makes. I don't, is that a generic thing? Do you guys know what I'm yeah, talking I about? Or I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, that that desserts to me uh, are are going to be like a distant... I'll probably just eat more cornbread, but uh, a, a good chocolate pudding pie would be the other, only other pie remaining after the big three have been taken off. All right, so chocolate pudding pie, that's right? Yeah, I think that's what it is, huh? I have another word for it, I think, but I don't want to say it out loud in case it's not what I'm thinking of. Well, that's I'm thinking, not what we I think of the same show, thing. So you might as well just yeah. say it. I'm thinking French silk pie. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. I, is that what you're me, talking about? French, uh, let somewhere. me try to Google it. Uh, oh, fuck, there's no internet at the fucking. Let me use my phone real quick. French silk I'll, you I'll said? do it. I got you, KFC. Uh, I, I don't know. Thinking. I was thinking. Oh, he was yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry. I mean. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That plays. Okay. So are we write in French so, shows sorry, or in chocolate sorry, Dave. pudding? No, sorry, Dave. That, but that is what, it, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Did you, just, 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 did you just give KSC an assistant a French silk on the graphic, Dave? Like, is there some collusion assist. going on between the Mets guy and the White Sox guy? That is oh, one no. of the I mean, biggest. Uh, KFC just went from having a 1.1 item on the graphic to having an 8.6 item on the graphic, and Dave just handed it to him. You know what that was? That was like that's like the LeBron and D Wade picture. Like that was sorry. I mean, your boy just threw me a sick alley oop. I, I, In mean, an individual nice. man's game, I well, was told listen. to say it out loud. He is a man of integrity and honor, White Sox, Dave, and so I thank you, Dave. I'm not, though. I am not. I know. You're definitely not. That's why it's very funny. <laughs> I am Silk not. pie off the board. Wow, Dave, that's And there's up. another thing, white trash. You can get that for like five bucks at the local grocery store. Well, see, where- that's how white trash I am. I don't even know the fucking name of it. It's just the chocolate with the cream and all that. But, yes, French silk indeed. It does. I mean, I went from like chocolate pudding sounds like you're a homeless person. French silk sounds like you are, uh, you know, a cultured fucking. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, Carl. Right. <laughs> Chief to you. All right. Uh, I'm going dessert in the third round as well. Um, 
somewhere along the way, my mom stopped making apple pies and she started making apple crisps. She actually made one for Ed last year. I don't know why. She just thinks he's a nice boy and brought him an apple fucking crisp. <laughs> I didn't it. get one, but Ed did. So I'll explain that. Uh, but yeah, apple crisp, it's, it doesn't have like that pie crust bottom, but it's like the, the filling is the same and it's got this crumbly, I don't even know what the fuck it is. She, I don't know how she makes it, but it's like a common item. Um, but yeah, apple crisp. So I have to have a dessert there in the third round. I'm going with apple crisp. It was very I good. So I like the pick. I mean, I think it's an awful pick personally because I don't even know what it is you're talking about, really. I mean, I well, can, like, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll have to have my mom make you one too. I would, I, because I love apple, mm -hmm. apple, anything I love. So I'm sure I would love it. I just don't think it'll play very well for this specific purpose because. I don't think many people will just automatically know what it is. Yeah. Maybe well, I'm how about this? My mom listens to this show, so I'm not going to say anything to her, but I'll see you this weekend. Probably when I come home from Thanksgiving, I'm sure Marianne who is listening right now will make you a delicious apple Chris, and then you can get on board and say how great that you can vote for me in the poll. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Good I'll stuff I'll for myself. But yep. yeah. all right, you, Dave, you got an apple Chris coming your way. Guaranteed. Love that. Yeah, good move, Dave. It's a good move. All right, Apple Chris off the board. Anything else? KFC, Carl? No, hey. all right. No, no, yeah. Okay. All right, so it's to me now. Um, I need. I'm probably gonna go with another side. Uh, can I do this? I think I should be able to, but uh, I'm gonna go cornbread casserole. Have you ever had that? Nope. I don't know what that is, but it's very I, good. I, 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 are you saying like because it differentiates enough from cornbread? I would say so. Yeah. 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 I yeah, think yeah that's yeah. a totally different thing. C casserole. Yeah. Explain it to me. I don't think I even really know what it is. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like, it's, it's like got the, the, the corn in there and it's just like, you know, it's all oh, baked oh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're, yeah, that's, it's, we don't have it, but I have had it before and it's, it's very good. It's very good. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, this kid used to make it in college all the time. It was fire. Um, so, I mean, I don't cornbread casserole, the big problem with cornbread, cornbread is awesome, but sometimes it's too dry. You don't have that problem with cornbread casserole. So, uh, wet. A nice yes. little steam filling thing. Yeah. Exactly. It's very, very good. Uh, so that's my pick. And uh, White Sox, Dave, no one has anything else. So I don't have anything else if anybody else wants to add something. I think that's a sneaky good pick. Um, I just do think it's also a little atypical. I don't know if that's like, you know, a common yeah. thing amongst most Americans on Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to go. So I got to go with uh, my second side. Um, this is for this sole purpose of it's, it's got the little like cream texture and it's a little soupier. I got to go with green bean casserole. Oh. I think it's like, I think it's a perfectly fine third or fourth round pick. I feel like well, a lot of people it, like I, swear by green bean casserole. I feel like people, some people it's like their number one. Some people, some people absolutely. I think it's, it's fine. It's good. It is synonymous with Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's just like my fourth favorite side personally. But so I have to take one. I don't love green beans, but I love green bean casserole. You get the I crispy the onions, the crispy bacon. You mix it all together, a little gravy. It's fucking it, – it's a great side. So getting that in the third round, I mean, it's always on my plate. Yeah, it might when, not be whenever, my favorite. Uh, whenever I post my blog, like – a lot of people argue that my shit's too basic or too white trash, and the first thing they all always say is there's always a huge outcry for green bean casserole. So I think a lot of people are going to think that's in, like incredible value for your last pick. That's where that's where I had to go with right there. I, I couldn't let it get to the next round, even though I have the next pick. Speaking of my next pick, I'm going to go into the uh, worst person to sit next to category. I think we can all relate here in some fashion. It's the fucking weirdo, asshole, dickhead, drunken, uh, maybe he's got some mental issues uncle. Just a, just a weird uncle. So uh, just your uncle. Just say your uncle. No, it's but <laughs> like I have uncles that I like love to see. Like we, yeah, young, yeah. And, you know, and we, we get along. We shoot the shit about sports. We get drunk together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you know what else is happening? Like, so right now, oh. right now there's an uncle listening, watching this going, well, wait a minute. I don't watch sports with Dave. So fuck, that's me. So you guys, you guys, that uncle guys, doesn't listen to this podcast, so yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. A little glimpse into the La Familia de WSD. I do have the weird uncle. He's yeah. got a lot of issues, and I can promise you, he has no idea what the fuck Barstool Sports is. You know so what's I'm, funny though is I I can almost assure you that one day you will be the weird uncle. 
I mean, I already am. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Am. All right. So you so go to Christmas which, future here. It's birthday today, and I do got to Venmo my sister to give her a hundred bucks. That's yeah. my we- birthday. Weird uncle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, the weird uncle just every like, you know, you have to see him. You're like dreading it. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, uncle. So and so is going to be at Thanksgiving. So weird uncle. To be clear, weird uncle. All right. Fair enough, Dave. All right, so it's back to me. I'm going to stay in the same category. Um, nothing derails and halts a fucking Thanksgiving conversation quite like the person at the table who can't fucking hear. Um, I Listen, I, I, I sympathize okay. with you if you can't hear, but holy shit. If it's but, just if you're but sitting they're next not to the person, listening anyway, so fuck them. I know, <laughs> but it's like if you're sitting next to them and they're the ones piping, what did he say? I can't hear. You know, it's like, shut up. Like, just yeah. just eat your food. Keep it moving. They just derail everything. Dude, I I actually am this guy at the bar or across a big table. I know it, but so I just so I just don't like engage. I can't hear well, so I just like eat my food. I'm not gonna be like what, huh? Yeah, I just like we're not gonna talk. We're not gonna talk. It's fine. I can't hear you. You give the give the like the subtle like you you just answer yes. Always, always a laugh or a chuckle or a yes or no. No, Like what are you laughing? I'm like, dude, real talk. I just can't hear you. I have shitty ears. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I, I took a stab in the dark. I said there's a, a 60% chance you're saying something kind of funny, so I decided to laugh. Sorry, I was wrong. Yep. And even you guys could say it's the worst, though, when you're with someone who can who can hear worse than you. Like, oh. it just it just constantly derails everything. I think that, you get that's one. That's a great answer. You get one, like, what'd you say? And maybe yeah, a, yeah, if it's yeah. an important conversation, maybe a second, like, wait, one more time? And then if you, I mean, then that's it. Maybe yeah. you get two to, yeah. like, help me out here. And otherwise, then the conversation is just not for you. It is what it is. Yeah, and usually it's a grandparent that sometimes they get frustrated. They can't hear. Oh, I can't hear what he's saying. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? they throw their hands. I can't hear them. It's like, all right, like let's. Like it's someone we're... else's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like get the fucking antennas and let's keep it moving. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, but yeah, so hard of hearing person is mine. It's the person who can't hear. Uh, it's a Chief great team. pick, Ed. Thank you, Carl. Chief. To me. Yeah. I feel like there's a ton of worse people maybe that's just my thanksgiving experience with my own as a shot at my own family but um hmm all right i'm gonna go i don't know what to call this like a like the nervous cook but it's like your uh your cousin or somebody a, a girl in her early 20s mid 20s who decides like oh i'm gonna start like cooking and bringing things and participating in that process and then it's like, oh, is this good? Did you like it? Did you like it? Did you like it? And oh, nobody's eating my thing. So then you get guilt, guilted into eating something to be nice when you really just want to throw more mashed potatoes on there. So like, I don't know what to call it other than like the nervous or like the first time. That's like uh, she, she would be the buffalo chicken dip girl at the Super yeah. Bowl. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But she's, yeah. she's now trying her hand at, at Thanksgiving. Right. I, I know. And then, yeah, you have to fake it. Eat mm-hmm. it. You're like, yeah, it's. Terrible, fucking yeah. awful. Yeah. If yeah. you gotta you told- ask, by the way, just a good rule of thumb. Like, if you made something that's fucking fire, you're gonna know. People are gonna take a bite right. and be like, "Oh my god, who made this? This is great." If no one's saying anything, your dish sucks, pretty much. Right. If it's still there, you didn't do a good job. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a great uh, answer. I'm trying to think of how we put it down. The, the yeah. Try my dish First person. Time- yeah, yeah, like yeah, I, I have nervous cook written, but but yeah, like try my dish. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to. The experiment, like th- Thanksgiving experiment. Uh, Thanksgiving first timer, like I don't know. First time, first time cook. cook. For, for, first, first time, time cook. cook. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's a good one, Chief. Uh, KFC, you're up. Uh, I'm gonna go with worst person to sit with. Uh, I'm gonna go with a Native American. <laughs> Just any old Native American. Any <laughs> anybody from any of the tribes. I would not want to be sitting with them and my white ass family on Thanksgiving. Ooh, think, can you elaborate a little bit? Can I what? Can you elaborate? Uh, it, uh, I would possible. I would think um, that the conversation would not be great. Bummer. I, I could see, yeah, it would be a little bit of a downer. Um, you know, we're trying to talk about football and uh, we're debating about whether or not gravy's a dish and they're like talking about the Trail of Tears. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with anybody who makes me feel like, you know, the genocidal, awful people that we are, the Native American. I took a gen ed at the University of Illinois. Our our Matt, well, like the our team name is the Fighting Illini, uh, and there's like a heavy Native American presence. One of my gen eds was a Native American studies class, 
and it was a young, really cool teacher, progressive guy. It was a great class. Guy was a, illuminated us into, you know, so much of like the prejudice and the awful stuff that has happened to him and like crazy stuff you wouldn't even know about. Take the class. We're coming up to Thanksgiving break. We had a great lecture and I was, and he and I had like a little rapport and I'm leaving. I'm like, you got any plans for Thanksgiving break? And he was like, yeah, in my house, we call it thanks taking. No, we're not. And yeah, we don't It do was that. the most, it was so unintentionally awkward and he was yeah. cool about it, but how serious he was like, we don't fucking celebrate this shit, Mike. Like that's yeah. not, I can and understand I, it wasn't, but it was like a holy shit moment. So I, I, if you're watching this on video, I encourage you, it comes out on Thursday or whenever that is on video. Like the mic drops real, but the point I think is, a, I think it's actually a valid answer. Like you're the guilt, you know, you're saying the guilt is overwhelming KFC. Is that what I'm picking up on? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's never going to really happen for me. I, there's nobody in my life who's a Native American, but that would be, uh, that would be my least favorite guest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. To our graphics. Get in trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's you're just saying what everybody's thinking. I, can't, I don't well, think I know about that. Hey, hand up. Hand yeah. up. I was not thinking yeah, that. Yeah, I was not thinking that. <laughs> that was. Uh, it's not what everybody was thinking. KFC. Just KFC. We're, back, we're, back to, we're back to 2010, man. I was going to say. All right. Yeah. Devness, uh, can we delete that one? <laughs> uh, Carl, to you. Uh,. Worst person to sit next to is somebody's new boyfriend or girlfriend. Brutal. Great answer. Brutal. It's just Brutal. like you have to be nice. If, if it's your brother or your sister, that's cool. I would imagine. I don't have sisters, but I just know like sibling is one. It's like if it's a cousin, that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Or would like you prefer? A, would you prefer a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Probably the girlfriend, because the boyfriend would try. I just don't like trying to get in and like, yeah. So like, would you major in? I'm like, yeah, I gotta yeah. give a fuck. The girl, you can just be so eat, like, oh, so do you watch? Agreed. The Crown, like the guy would try to be too cool. The other thing is like, it also extends to like, maybe there's like a bad divorce in the family, and like your aunt or your uncle is like bringing someone around. Ooh, and it's like, yikes! Hey, yeah. Fucking. Be nice to so and so. They met at church. You know, he's a good dude. <laughs> yeah, the Shit new boyfriend like or girlfriend over the age of like forty something is like, oh Ooh. fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like in in almost no case is it good, unless it's like someone like kind of famous where it's like, hey, do you hear so and so? Like her dad is actually friends with the guy. <laughs> And then you become Ooh, the annoying fucking, person. Like, yo, tell me yeah, the story. Like, tell me that one time. Yeah, like, yeah. he owns, like, the box, you know? And then yeah. you're like, oh, so, like, big into NBA. But for the most part, it's not good. Good pick. It's a very good pick. All right, your fifth rounder. Last round. This category, no one's going to draft anybody without getting fucking shit on. So, it's Ed, repeat the category. Because everyone it's, has uh, a category. One guest. Historic, famous... Whatever you want to say, it's one guest. One guest you'd like to have at your Thanksgiving. I'm taking Theo Epstein. Mm. He might be a Fresh mine, on you know? my mind. No, that's just like, I know. Fuck you, Cave. So he's taking the year off. <laughs> but, I mean, like, that's easy. That's a personal thing for me. But also, I think that's sensible as, as any, sport, any of you like sports. A good guest is somebody that can come in, can fit, can talk to different people, well, fly on the radar, but also fucking bro out. Counterpoint, yes. he's kind of a fucking lunatic. Yeah, you know, I mean, you hear those stories of him, like, you know, when he used to listen to the fucking planes crash and he used to wander <laughs> around Boston and follow people sure. home. And, you know, he's a little bit wacky. I don't know if you're going to get just like normal yeah, ass conversation. I think everybody has negative stuff. If someone were to dra draft <laughs> yeah. me and say, hey, I want to have Carl over at Thanksgiving, they go, well, that's a fucking bad idea because that guy's a loose cannon. <laughs> but I would I would want, A, the thing about Thanksgiving is when you get your pocket at the table and then the stories start rolling a special, mm -hmm. you also mm -hmm. want someone who doesn't cause too much fucking, you know, just come in and say hi to everybody. Like, But at this, you know, without like, you have to fit into a family atmosphere, which can be chaotic. But the other thing is like, I just want to let loose with Theo Epstein right now. And he also like, on his way out of town, it'd be nice to have him like in my house for Thanksgiving and be like, "Hey, bud, you know." I saw uh, Ryan Rosillo tweeted it the other day, saying that 
Theo Epstein's one of the greatest living Americans, and I kind of fucking agree with him. If you're a dude who's who's broken two baseball curses for two major cities in America, he's done more for a huge chunk of people in two important cities than a lot of fucking people in this in this country's history. So I I'm I'm with you on that pick, and I hope that he's gonna be mine. Last thing I would say, he's not gonna be yours. Last thing I would say is he and I've hung out with him a couple. He has great questions. I mean, the hmm. limited times I've hung out with him, he asks phenomenal questions. And if you're the new person in a group, one of the best things you can do is ask good questions to people and then just sit there and listen. Hmm. I agree with that. The only thing that sticks in my mind about him is that Portnoy story where he went to a party and Theo was just like sitting in the corner playing guitar by himself. Yeah. Like that's, that's not a weird. guy you want at, at your party. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do so you have to get good Theo? If you get good Theo, that's a home run. If you get like, oh, well, I'm going to follow, follow you home and play guitar. <laughs> Then, then that gets a little bit tough. So, yeah, yeah hearsay, Theo. You don't want to, Well, that's not even hearsay. He said that, like, those quotes about following people home. That, no, that's in true. Interview, but, like, yeah. sitting in the corner, you know, whatever. I trust Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I feel right. Epstein's off the board. KFC to you. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, the guy I often go with for a lot of these, Mike Francesa. I want number one at my dinner table. Uh, I would let him just completely take over the dinner table. He can tell the stories. He can run the conversation. I like uh, in his older age, as he's gotten away from, as he started retiring and get away from sports, he's gotten more political. So you would get politics at your dinner table with Mike Francesa dominating the conversation. It would get more awkward and more, uh, uh, I mean, he's just, it would be for a guy like me who grew up on him, Anytime there's a, a, a scenario of breaking bread, talking, conversating, and shooting the shit, he's, he's the only choice. He's number one for a reason. So give me Mike, and you know he can put a hurting on the Thanksgiving Day table. You know he's going for, like, thirds and fourths and fifths. Like, load it up. Get, get some more French silk, bro. Load it up, okay? Like, I yes. see he strikes me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, he strikes me as the kind of guy that, will like open the oven at someone else. If it's at your house, this is a doable move and an allowable, but he'll open up the, the oven just because he he is Mike Francesca. He is number yes. one. Just like take a spoonful of stuffing right from the turkey. And be like, like, I, like, at my like dad's house, I wouldn't do that at anybody else's house. Uh, he would absolutely do that. He'd be like, you know, this needs more salt. Or like, you know, this this is overcooked. Ugh, like, you know, have Julio go get me another turkey because this one, it's overcooked. It's garbage, okay? He would, he would take <laughs> over the whole fucking operation. Give me Mike... Any day, any holiday, Mike, I'd love to celebrate you with you. But give me uh, Fr Mike Francesa Thanksgiving version. Oh, baby. I love Francesa. It's a good pick. He would he would hear, hear none of the uh, football opinions either. None. He would, none. 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 Um, it's a good pick. So Frank, Mike Francesa off the board. Chief to you. I, I've struggled with this one. The one that I was like, I only had one name on my board, and it was Giada because you're going to have like, a little bit of a horny pick, but your food's going to be unbelievable uh, that day. But now after hearing those, I'm, I'm like wavering. I'll just go with Giada. I'll go Stick with Giada. Stick to your guns. Stick to your yeah, guns. Yeah, no, I'm a Giada guy. I've been a Giada guy for forever. It's going to be, you're going to have a fucking bomb-ass meal. You might have to listen to her say like spaghetti or like those yeah. other fucking weird Ragut, words. Which you get it. But right. what about this, though? Do you think that uh, it's almost like if you... If you were like, oh, I want to date a masseuse because she'll like always give me a good massage. You think that these chefs like hate Thanksgiving? That it's like their one day where they're like, I don't want to fucking cook for all you Very guys. I, well, I already DVR'd her Thanksgiving special. It looks fucking great. So <laughs> I think she goes to town. Like she knows what the, it might even be like her Super Bowl. Like yeah, right. Do you, think, do you think her presence elevates the other people in the kitchen, or do you think it makes her nervous? Like, fuck, now she's mm, here. Everyone's, I, everyone's I think it's one of those. It's one of those like you have a captain. She's the captain, and then she kind of guides everybody else. Mm. So you're, it, she raises everybody's game. That's what I, I could would've. see. By the way, I could see in the in the chef celebrity chef world. I bet they fucking hate her because she's pretty <laughs> and she's hot and she's thin. Like some yep. of the other women who are maybe not as uh, aesthetically pleasing must be like fuck Giada. Yeah. Oh, I I I would absolutely hate her. Guts right. If you're like them. the. Yep. Paula Dean or some shit, you're probably like, fuck this girl. Yeah. And that's why all the rumors come out like, well, she tastes her food and then spits it as soon as the, <laughs> spits it out as soon as the cameras turn off. So yeah, Does that's it? probably where that's what the rumor the haters that KFC's wow. talking about. Right. They make up all kinds of salacious rumors about her. Wow. Gia, I mean, I'm not surprised, but 
Dave, but, you got it. Not a great pick by him, right, Dave? I, I mean, it's a Thanksgiving draft, I think. I I have someone that I'm going to take, and after but, thinking about it a little bit, I think he'd be just so dominant at the table, I'd just get sick of him after a minute. But Giada wouldn't be like that, I don't think. Like, well, she, Giada, Giada's outside the box. There's a cooking factor, so I get where you're coming from. Yeah. It's fine pick. But it's for a Thanksgiving pick. draft, yes. I think, I think it's actually a pretty good pick. Yeah. That said, I don't know if enough people know who she is. No. Ooh, I think she's got a pretty high. All I right. call our, rating, our audience, or whatever. Our audience, I'm not positive. Maybe. I mean, I've, I've blogged her a lot. So if, if people if people are clicking on the blogs, then they should know who she is. All right. What are you taking, Dave? It's, or no, who's up? It's to, it's to I'm Eddie. up. Ed. It's, it's to me. I'm between two people, man. That's a really fucking – it's a tough one. One's like a selfish pick just because I'd like to share a meal with this guy. But one I think is gr- is better for the greater good of the Thanksgiving table. From an entertainment standpoint, I don't think you could put anyone at the table, maybe like a good comedian, but someone who's not a comic, than Charles Barkley. <laughs> to him sit there and, and just have him roast the food, roast the guests, and roast the table to the oven, it would be nonstop laughs. And he'd do it in a way where he's not a jag off. That's a great pick. Actually, I think I think he's Charles got the Barkley too. at at a white Thanksgiving too, like with a typical white family that doesn't do anything like his family. Oh yeah, and and yeah, I think I bet you Chuck Barkley before he's done, man, I want him to do a podcast or or a show of some sort where he gets a few in him and he really cuts loose and he tells all the untold stories, all of them, not even like the ones you might kind of know third hand, the ones that are deep deep in the vault. I'm sure he's got the best stories in the fucking world. It'd be great. And hopefully I have said this over and over. I think he's one of the smartest guys around. Mm-hmm. And if like, if I was starting an NBA organization from scratch, I truly, truly would go after him as my GM. That's how, like, I really think he's that intelligent and he's got that good of a brain. I know he's goofy and he's funny and he, like, you got to kind of dig underneath a little bit, but I think he's that smart. And I think he's that interesting. I would – he's on my – and I don't even like the NBA or basketball in general, really. He's on my Mount Rushmore people I want to drink with 100%. Mm-hmm. Just sit at a dive bar, lob, lob questions, get stories out of them. Home run pick by Ed right there. Very happy with Barkley. He'd be very funny. So, thank you, Dave. All right, Mr. Relevant, your pick, Dave. See, pick this, is, this is – it's such a tough category because this is, I just said, like my Mount Rushmore people I'd like to drink with. And, and lob questions, too. It kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with Thanksgiving because that's what you're doing. You're just sitting around telling stories, bullshitting with a bunch of people. The Hawk Harrelson. Ever. I got to yeah. go Hawk Harrelson. He's – he's like, if you read it, his autobiography, which you know you did, I did, uh, he's literally Forrest Gump. He's been in mm-hmm. every single situation on earth. And when we talked to him, when we interviewed him for Redline Radio a couple years ago, he's like, yeah, that, that book was like 10% of the stories I got. Frank Sinatra sent him hookers in Los Angeles. He was um, uh, like, he's been shot at multiple times. He's been, he's ridden on air force one with three different presidents. He has been in every single situation ever. Uh, like AJ Pierzynski said, he's for his gump. I think he would be awesome at Thanksgiving, but eventually you'd get sick of him because he's just such a dominating human that you'd be like, all right, enough's enough. Hawk. enough. The, the fans kicking in. All I want to do is be quiet, fall asleep for like the five, 30 halftime football game, whatever's playing. Like, I want to take a little nap, just chill the fuck out or go home. But it's, it's Hawk Harrelson. Like, he's right up there with someone I have to drink with one day. No surprise. That's a White Sox Dave pick. I wouldn't expect anything else. It's a good pick for you, Dave. Hawk Harrelson. Um, I'm going to roll through one more time. We'll do some honorable mentions. We'll get out of here. Uh, Carl had uh, stuffing, pecan pie. Mac and Cheese, uh, the new boyfriend slash girlfriend of uh, one of your family members. Uh, Theo Epstein, KFC had uh, cranberry sauce, cornbread, French silk pie, Native American, Mike Francesa. Uh, Chief had mashed potatoes, biscuits, apple crisp, uh, the try my dish person, and Giada. Eddie had pumpkin pie rolls, cornbread casserole, heart of hearing person, uh, Charles Barkley. White Sox Dave had apple pie. Sweet potato casserole, green bean casserole, weird uncle, and Hawk Harrelson. I'll say it right now. I don't think anybody's running away with this draft, and I don't think anybody's draft is horrible. Going to be interesting. I think this is pretty easy, evenly matched across the board. 
I, I, surprising no political person was taken but i, I was we all was, thought it was too easy probably yeah i, yeah. I was gonna have ben Ooh. shapiro on my list as as worse to sit with uh but yeah you, you would have thought there would be somebody in there but i yeah. don't think yeah. he would be that bad because oh, of his God. political opinion oh, he's, More, he's just such Jesus. a swirly fucking <laughs> insecure asshole that just has to shove his political opinion down your throat i have an right. honorable mention for uh worst as well the the cousin uh, who anybody in your family who doesn't really know sports but tries to do like the football talk the worst. and i'm and i'm trying to be polite you know they're like oh they should have definitely gone for it on fourth down and you're sitting there like no they fucking like are you crazy but you have to just be like yeah man yeah you're right they're pussies i know man rather than get into like a huge argument that you know you're just gonna dominate them in but they don't get it that's the worst i hate that guy the guy who doesn't know sports but acts like he does Ugh. You yeah. watch that once a year and it's on Thanksgiving with the right. Family. It's like, shut up, man. That guy is also similar, and sometimes it's the same person, but the person who won all their bets all day. So oh, it's my like God. they don't know anything, but they're up, you know, a thousand, and you're just mm -hmm. fucking you're killing yourself. Honorable mention for me for worst person, anyone who's left handed. Like, if you're sitting around a crowded mm -hmm. dinner table and, and they, they, they do it backwards, and it's just like, I can't believe I got stuck, stuck next to for me, it was my cousin Brian. Fucking cousin Brian with his left-handed eating all year every Thanksgiving sucks. So why didn't you take that, Chief? Because left-handed people hate themselves because of that inconvenience. Like they, it's uh, it's an inconvenience for that's a rocks. That would have been one of the best who, picks. Who was your you've ever made? Hate, hated person. I had the oh uh, the, the taste tester one. Yeah, yeah I think lefty would have been annoying. the pick. Really? I mean, yeah. Lefty might be one of the great picks uh, in in that would have been one of the great picks in dog walk history. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sick I guess I fucked that one up because I'll show you. It is. I have it. This is the first thing I wrote down, and maybe I just overthought it. What about the Black Friday in person? My family, mm. both are lefty, and both my parents are lefty. Or the Black Wednesday guy who's like, oh, oh yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, I, I have just quick quiche. I love a quiche. Uh, I don't quiche. know if that gets enough playing time. Dessert, everybody takes ice cream for granted. You guys were saying a la mode. I don't think you're allowed to put the ice cream on the pie unless you draft the ice cream. Um, that's a vanilla bean that plays. That was ace in the hole. If you guys took all the pies, I was left with pecan. And then I want to address uh, uh, historical leaders quickly, Washington and Lincoln. Those would have been valid draft picks. The reason those don't play, obviously, is because it's like, oh, that's a pander. Those guys suck. Who wants Washington and Lincoln around? Washington was the first, obviously, notable American leader to make Thanksgiving like kind of a big deal it was like hey guys Thanksgiving like he was quoted about it was talking about the importance of like post harvest getting together but Lincoln's the one who actually made it a national holiday in 1863 that's a big fucking deal obviously now Lincoln gets a B for that Washington gets a B for making a big deal those would have been the two big historical names I'm done with my honorable mention I was about to draft Jesus like hey you're <laughs> out, you're out of booze just have him like run the tap water and turn it into party going. Yeah. yeah. It was called the last supper for a reason, Dave. I don't think he's coming back for Thanksgiving. At your house. <laughs> and then quickly uh, also, we said the guests you take in, we talked about them in the office and no one, no one drafted it. Mm -hmm. Oh, the guy from work. Yeah. The guy. Yeah. Who like can't travel home is like, Hey, you don't mm -hmm. mind. Like you're close enough. Like, yeah. Okay. The, the, the two personal aunt, like who are you dating? Where's your yeah. girlfriend? That, that, the, like the, that's, the the, the oh, friend Tom Lay went back to New York. Tom, that could have been you at my Thanksgiving. So it's not right. That bad. The, like the the bad the, guy from work. the the friend coworker whoever that you offer a completely fake offer to come over that they take you up on it. Uh, I mean, like, dude, I didn't really think you were to come and sit here. I was just trying to be polite. Are you fucking crazy? You're gonna sit here and be like the 18th, 19th wheel for my family? Fuck off. What kind of asshole accepts an invitation to Thanksgiving? I mean, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, you just, you just sit alone. I, yeah. I, w I wish I could just be like, I'll, I'm going to sit by myself and just like binge watch and eat whatever the fuck I want. I don't have to do Thanksgiving. If you if you turn down that opportunity, asshole. It's then my other guest, I thought about John Candy. I just love to fucking share mm. a pumpkin pie with that guy. <laughs> mm. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, that would have been All right, good. gentlemen. Was, this was an honor. I feel like this was yeah. an important one to be a part of, and I'm very happy uh, I got the invite, yeah. It was big. Thanks, KFC. We appreciate it, man. You got it, man. Let me know um, whenever. I'll, I'm down All right, for that's one. it. That's the Thanksgiving draft, everybody. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you then.